Good afternoon again, Social Good Summit 2015. We still have lots of great stuff to come, so don't go away. And we're going to start with a conversation around Spatial Agent, a new look at development data with Harsh, who is the World Bank's global lead for watersheds. Let's please welcome Harsh from the World Bank. Hey. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Harsh, and if you want more of a challenge, there's uh, probably a longer version, which is out there, Nagaraj Rao Harshadeep, if you want uh, the longer version. Uh, and for another challenge, we'll also be trying today to uh, get this, uh, ah, good, it works, um, uh, to get this uh, so that it's a, a live demo uh, also. Uh, now, I've been at the bank for about two decades, which uh, probably also puts me in a generation above most of you uh, over here. And uh, one of the things that uh, has happened uh, in all my visits all over the world working on environment, water, and, uh, and climate has been uh, a meeting with many different types of stakeholders, from uh, ministers all the way uh, to school kids. So one of the things that uh, everyone uh, remarks uh, slowly over time and one of the insights that you get over time is that a lot of the activities which are happening in uh, a, a particular region uh, all need to be looked at uh, in a synergistic fashion in a watershed to look at it multi-sectorally. Now what has all this got to do with data? We've heard over the last couple of days in lots of very interesting conversations, everyone bring up the issue of data and how data is so central to a lot of the work that we are doing, whether it be to measure what we did during the MDGs or whether we want to look at what we are going to do during the SDGs uh, coming up and so on. But it's also relevant for everyday activities. And one of the problems that we have is that most of us uh, have problems accessing the data, either because it's under lock and key uh, in many different government departments, uh, or uh, because it's available but in some strange format or in some obscure website someplace and so on. So uh, what have, uh, 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 it, at the bank, one of the things that we've tried to do is to see what can we do about this problem. But now uh, we're happy to announce that there's probably an app for that. Uh, so this is an app called uh, Spatial Agent, which uh, we've uh, developed. And one of the uh, things that we've been trying to do with uh, this app is to uh, look at, uh, for example, trying to pull together data sets from many different providers, from about 300 or so different services, from agencies across the UN, uh, across the World Bank, across NASA, European Space Agency, and a whole range of uh, universities and others. And just to give you a flavor of some of the things that it uh, does, if we uh, imagine ourselves as one of the stakeholders, if we are, uh, let's say, a school kid in Malawi who just wants to know how uh, his country stacks up against the rest of the world when it comes to, let's say, the economy. So uh, ways of pulling together a lot of uh, different global data sets, so let's say in Madagascar, looking at how the economy was improving, let's say till uh, 1980, when it was around $450 per capita, all the way uh, to because of the civil war going down. Now, what if that had continued over time? What would that economy have looked like? So maybe he wants to look at what China has done. So where, for example, in 1980, it was uh, even lower than what was then uh, Madagascar uh, earlier. So if uh, it had continued growing, who knows what could have happened if uh, civil war and strife hadn't uh, come in the way. Similarly, if uh, we are looking at, uh, say, basic information relating to, uh, for example, just population and the way uh, population is distributed around the world. So the school kid might want to know uh, where do the people live around the world? And uh, it looks like right now India and China. Uh, but uh, also uh, in uh, terms of, uh, for example, how does the world look like at night uh, in the sense to give a sense of uh, in Madagascar, are there really places which are well lit compared to the rest of the country, compared to the rest of the world that we're looking at? So the, to give you a, a sense of the challenges that we have uh, going ahead. 
Similarly, if we want to look at, uh, say, urban agglomerations, and uh, you're a government official and want to see, for example, what the future in, uh, let's say, Lagos uh, looks like, and you want to see not only how historically the population has grown, but what the projections are as we look ahead to 2030, uh, and we see the uh, doubling of population that would happen there. Or uh, places like uh, China, where, for example, in, even though the population overall is uh, been stabilizing, you have a lot of urbanization happening. So cities that didn't even exist in the early 90s uh, now have about uh, 12 million people and heading more. Now, uh, similarly, if we uh, look at how these cities are uh, susceptible to a whole range of different uh, uh, problems, for example, if you look at climate variability and look at all the cyclone tracks that have ever come in, and by the way, all these are coming in live from different sources. This one is from UNEP, for example, uh, over here. And to get a sense of that kid in Madagascar might want to know that it's not just the eastern side of the country that's buffeted by uh, a lot of the Category 5 cyclones, but even the western uh, bits of it, uh, for example, out here. Or uh, if uh, they uh, want to get a sense of uh, some things that everyone complains about, not getting access to basic climate data. So if we look at any part of the world, uh, for example, we've hooked up with uh, all the, the WMO stations, for example, to get a sense of uh, places like Colombo, for example, what would be the rainfall coming from both the, the monsoon and the retreating monsoon, as well as the entire data set on record that's been shared with the world uh, from 1983, if it was looking at precipitation or looking at temperature, and you can see uh, uh, warming in more recent years, uh, for example, over here. Or if you wanted to look at uh, climate change uh, type of information and want to compare a whole range of different models and get a sense of uh, what different models have to say about different parts of uh, the world. So to be able to quickly get this kind of information at your fingertips if you're, say, someone working in the government at, uh, in some of these areas. Or if you're interested in looking at things more graphically and you're a social scientist and want to see what the population is in uh, different countries, uh, for example, in the US, uh, as you can see, uh, the population below 14 uh, years is only about, I guess, 18% uh, of the population, whereas in Africa, we're looking at that being almost half the population uh, over here. Or you want to look at fertility rates and how that's dropping in all the countries, but we still have a long way to go in uh, places uh, like in many African uh, nations and so on. Or, uh, for example, to get information about uh, if you were a, a farmer and just wanted to get a sense of, uh, uh, let's say, if you were living in uh, one of these uh, pasture lands around the world uh, or uh, looking, uh, li living in one of these croplands around the world, uh, which uh, then you might want to know what the rainfall is uh, on these areas. So uh, if you want to tap into, let's say, the NASA information on uh, in the last three hours since we've been here uh, this afternoon, uh, how much rainfall has been there in the rest of the world to be able to access this kind of information uh, there. Or uh, if you were, uh, for example, to look at uh, being a budding scientist and uh, wanted to get a sense of uh, what the El Nino looks like this year and uh, wanted to know what the sea surface temperatures were off the coast of uh, Peru or anywhere else in the world, not just uh, today but from different sources sources and uh, also what did it look like yesterday or last month or last year and so on, being able to quickly access a whole world of information at your fingertips uh, over here. Uh, and also if you were curious to get to uh, know what the Earth might look like from space. Uh, so the satellites haven't finished uh, mapping the Earth today, but if you wanted to see what it looked like yesterday uh, or last month or last year, again, being able to get a lot of these and then use these either in reports or in uh, through social media to try and add data to a lot of the arguments that uh, all of you are uh, out to make. And also a couple of new things that are coming uh, down the pike, for example, if uh, you want to get a sense of, for any country in the world, 
let's say, Ethiopia, uh, what the trade looked like. So this is tapping into something called an MIT atlas, where you're looking at what the uh, trade in dollars are, uh, say in this case, coffee would be the one of the biggest exports in Ethiopia for $838 million, or uh, cut flowers and so on uh, in different places. And you can see a lot of these are related to better management of the land and water resources of a country. So to try and get a better sense of these kind of issues, or to look at exports or imports or import partners and for any year in the past and so on uh, out here. So uh, in uh, effect, uh, uh, I think one of the key things that I'm uh, trying to say here is that data is a uh, public good. In fact, uh, it's probably a social good. And uh, one of the things that uh, I encourage all of you to do is to uh, help make, uh, uncage a lot of this data that's locked up in different uh, vaults in, in uh, many uh, places where uh, the only things digesting that information are termites in many cases, uh, or uh, are in the wrong formats or in uh, the wrong uh, kind of uh, 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 obscure websites in all over the uh, place. So to try and see how uh, you can free more of this data, and we're happy to work with any of you on this to try and see if you can get more data accessible in the public domain. And we'd like to hear from you what kind of data you would like to see and what kind of data you would like to use. So please download the spatial agent app that's uh, out there. It's available both on iOS and on Android, and there's also a web version now on the way. And please do send us your feedback as to what you would like to see, or, or stories on how you have used it. And uh, to paraphrase uh, Patty Smith, who was here earlier, I think uh, we should all try and wake up from our slumber and take a look at the numbers. All right? Thanks. 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 Thanks.